One of the most important places in my life, anywhere on the planet, is a youth camp in Michigan's Upper Peninsula in the middle of nowhere. It's called Hiawatha Youth Camp. And a good portion of the 52 plus summers I've spent on this earth have been associated with that camp, either as a little boy camper or as a staff member. I met my wife there and I've been on the board of Hiawatha for quite some time. And so it was especially devastating, stunning, to be honest with you, just a few weeks ago to see the biggest building on the campgrounds completely collapse. The building was called the Miracle Building because of what it took to get it built way back in the early 70s. And even though there was no storm, there was no buildup of snow, the building collapsed. Boy, there were a lot of emotions, not just for me, but from an awful lot of people who have spent and associated a lot of their lives with this very special place. And as we watch demolition crews come in to clear the foundation for a rebuild, I started thinking about the correlations between what happened at Hiawatha and what's happening in our lives during the COVID-19 era. Something that you thought was pretty much indestructible and would just go on forever is brought to the ground. And it's, it's brought to the ground with the opportunity to rebuild it bigger, better, stronger, and in different ways than it existed before. And that's the most important point that I want to make in this conversation, in different ways than it was before. I don't know if you've ever had the chance to talk with someone who's been through a, a life-shattering series of decisions, perhaps addictions, and they've seen everything come tumbling apart, and they say to you something like, I, I really hope you'll pray for me to get back to where I was. And, and, and my response in those situations is usually, I, I'm not going to pray for you to get back to where you were, but I'm happy to pray for you to get to a place that you've never been before, far healthier, far wiser, far more balanced and grounded and far more prepared with a foundation to move forward for however many years you have left. And so as we think about, in my mind, the pictures of what's happening at Hiawatha and the plans for the rebuilding of a new miracle building that will better serve the next 50 years, I think the same thing about our country, about our families, and about you and me as individuals. So here from a personal standpoint are a few things that have been on my mind. Number one, we have the opportunity right now to not go back to the scheduling insanity that was a part of so many of our lives. We can actually regain, rebuild, and reprioritize the things to which we will commit. You don't have to be just a glorified Uber service for your kids. As you've seen over the past few months, they're going to survive even if they're at home with mom and dad together. Let's regain some scheduling sanity. Number two, many of you have done a wonderful job of committing to a fitness and nutrition regimen because you didn't want to get out of control while you were at home and not quite as active. Don't give that up. Maintain the nutritional and fitness discipline that you've worked so hard on during the shutdown. Number three, neighborly kindness. I've been blown away by how kind people around us have been, and I'm sure you have as well. If we turn off the news for just a little bit of time, we see and we hear about good stories, kind stories, generous stories of people going out of their way to do things for others in need. Wouldn't it be awesome if we never went back to like we were, where the fences around our properties seem to also close us off to the opportunities to to minister to and to encourage other people. Let's continue the neighborly kindness. And finally, generosity. It's kind of tied to neighborly kindness. I have seen through charitable and ministry-related causes, I have seen people in a time of national emergency be generous beyond what I thought they were going to do. I've been wrong on a number of occasions when I was consulting with and advising some of the ministries that I work with. I say, you can't expect this kind of a response. And the response was overwhelming, and it blew them and me away. And so, friends, as we have the foundation cleared for the rebuilding of ourselves and our schedules and our nation, let's not go back to where we were. Yeah, it's been a pain in the backside. I get it. We're in it. But it's also been an unprecedented opportunity. And my encouragement to you is to not go back to where you were, but to move forward to a place you've never been before. 
And if we at Hobson Media can somehow help you get there, I do hope you'll reach out to us. We've got some lessons in that rubble. Let's move forward and learn them together.